Lesson 5, Adding GPS Points to Intersections. Hi, this is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com, and in Lesson 5, I'm going to show you how to add GPS information to your network of arterials and intersections. We will use GPS data from Google Earth to allow our model to be used on the streets. Let's start with the Google Earth end. Open up the application, and like with anything, organization is key to this process, because you never know when you will need this data later on. For our downtown network, let's start by creating folders Norfolk and Downtown. In here, I will create folders for each intersection, which might be too many folders for your workflow. So for instance, um, I will name Bush Street and Freemason Street, which you're looking at right now. Now I'm going to add place marks or push pins in the intersection. Now there are many ways to place these markers for the intersection. The simplest method, but the most inaccurate method, would be to just place one push pin right here, right in the middle of the, of the intersection. We're not going to do it this way. A method I would recommend is to place a push pin at the outside through lane immediately beneath a, a stop bar or wherever the intersection officially begins. So I'll take the, the push pin we already placed and if I right click on it and hit properties I can now move where exactly he's located. So again th this first method will be to, be to push the push pin on the outside corner of one of the legs. I'll repeat this process and I'll add another push pin to the outside corner of this leg. So this would be one method of pushing the push pins or putting the push pins in their place. Another method that's recommended is to place these push pins at the apex of the corners. For instance, this guy would go somewhere here. And this would be another method. So again, a four-legged intersection will have four corners and four push pins. Um, if I had a five-legged intersection, I could have five push pins. Now the purpose is twofold as far as true traffic is concerned. One, it uses the average of the four locations to find the center of the intersection. Two, true traffic will use these points to determine the size of the intersection. And this is where I this is where just having one place mark in the middle may not be sufficient because then true traffic really does ha doesn't have an idea of how big the intersection is. By me placing these four uh, push pins at the corners or at the at each leg, um, true traffic really gets a so gets a an idea of the size of the intersection and it will make the intersection an appropriate size. Um, an intersection that's too small will create problems for you. Uh, when you hit the streets gathering travel time information. Um, we'll go over this uh, a common problem why your delay reports skip an intersection. Oftentimes it's because you only use one place mark um, in your model. Now you'll want to name each of these intersections by the intersection ID number with a pound symbol, with a pound symbol before the ID number. For instance, let's go ahead and say that this is intersection number 8. I will call him pound eight then. Now you can see how this may, may take some time. Let me show you another way, a much simpler way, and it'd probably save you a couple steps. It's to simply put your first, first push pin down, name it appropriately, pound eight. Take this one, uh, do, do a copy paste or command C, command V and create four of them. 
Now I like to go um, in a counterclockwise way. So I'd go here, I'd click on my first one, wait till I got the little adjusting icon or the little hand that I've actually grabbed that one. Oh, okay. And you can see how now I don't have to name it pound eight three times or four times. I can simply just go around um, the intersection and I have it. Okay, there you go. Um, I've already went ahead and named all my intersections. Let me go ahead and open that one up. I've used this method on many projects and I have yet to find one um, that isn't, that the image wasn't exactly where it was. That I went ahead and I put my GPS points in, in Google Earth. I got my GPS points from Google Earth, the image. And then when I went out there in the streets, um, those points matched with what my, what my thing was collecting. Now, of course, some of the problems you're gonna have are if your aerial image is older, um, for instance, uh, this one, the imagery date on here says 4-6-2010. We're in 2012 now, and this intersection is now completed. But you can see how I was able to get all these points, roughly 33 intersections, um, get, a, get, get a good GPS point, and this took me under 30 minutes um, to complete. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up our, our true traffic file. Now this is a, a continuation from lesson four. Um, what you're going to notice is that I've I've went ahead and, and finished out um, with arterials and intersections for all 33 intersections. Um, one thing I want to explain to you is is linking. Now, when you look at your network, um, you're oftentimes you're going to have a street that not only goes with the Brambleton Avenue arterial, but is also part of the Bush Street arterial. So here we have intersection number two, and you can see it twice. Um, and this is why it's important um, to your, this is why your ID number is important, because if you put the proper ID number, it will go ahead and pop out. And it's easy for me to say, oh, this, this two is the exact same two as over there. And what I'm simply gonna do is, I'm gonna grab intersection two, the Brambleton Avenue Bush Street intersection, and link it with the Bush Street Brambleton intersection. So you can see that intersection number two is the exact same intersection. Um, it's just on two different arterials. And we're going to link it. The way I want to link it though is everything. I don't want to link just the offsets or just the timings. Um, I want to go ahead and link everything, which includes the GPS points. I hit OK. Now over here, this window over here to the right kind of shows all the intersections that I've linked together. And you can see that 33 is 33, and 32 is 32, and 29 is 29. That I've went ahead and I've linked all these intersections. But if I were to click on one of these intersections, intersection number one, for instance, um, there are no coordinates set yet. And here is how we're going to put the coordinates in um, automatically. The ID number corresponds to the pound number I put in Google Earth. Okay, now I'm going to open up Google Earth again. Here's my Norfolk Downtown KML file um, with all my points in there. I'm going to come here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to come over here to my arterial outline window in True Traffic and I'm simply going to paste. And when I do that, um, this dialog box pops open and it's called the Assigned Geographic Coordinates. Now the way it works is on here on the waypoint side, these pound one, pound one, pound two, these correspond to the four push pins I put at each one of my intersections. Here's the longitude and latitude. And it's went ahead, it went ahead and true traffic, because of using the pound symbols and my ID numbers, I'm having some method to that madness. Um, it knows that these four push pins go with the West Brambleton Avenue um, diagram, the Duke Street intersection. Now you notice I just clicked, and when I clicked, that little dial block, dialog blocks uh, went away. Um, for some reason, um, import doesn't, the import doesn't always happen unless you do that. So make sure you paste 
and then you click in here somewhere to kind of um, get rid of that dialog box. Um, I've already set my name, so I want to uncheck this guy, and I'm, I'm going to hit OK. Um, it asked me about my distances. I really haven't set a distance, so I'm going to check this. Um, I'm going to uncheck this box because if you haven't specified any dis distances yet. Okay. And now I can come to this window right here, which is the View Network button. And then I can come here and I can say Layout Grid with Geographic Coordinates. And presto, I have, an, I have, a, I have my GPS points, I have my intersections with some GPS latitude and longitude attached to them. And now I get this image here, which looks an awful lot like um, what downtown Norfolk looks like. So I, I kind of know in my head that, that these two images are right. So again, this is Chris Georges with trafficblobs.com. Um, you can find this podcast and other podcasts on YouTube um, by searching for True Traffic 9.0. Um, you can also find links to my website at www.trafficlabs.com and you can find links to all these podcasts. Um, thanks for listening.